All right, good morning. We're going to start in a seated pose. And I just want you to make sure that you have some blocks, maybe a blanket or a pillow um, for your bottom so you can come into a comfortable seated pose. This is your all-level Hatha yoga class. We're going to flow today. So the um, goal is to get some liquid, some movement in our joints. So our joints get really stiff, and a lot of times our joints get stiff not as much because we're not moving, but our joints um, are where our acupuncture points are. And when we physically and mentally get stiff, get worried, get stressed, we put a lot of pressure in our joints. Now the joints are where, kind of like if you have, you know, a waterway and it's the stopping point. So you have a little turn and sometimes that turn can become a little congested if everything doesn't flow. If debris starts to build around that turn, the water doesn't flow. And that's what happens in our joints is our water isn't flowing very well. Um, it can also happen because mentally we're a little stressed. So I want you to think about letting go. Um, we are trying really hard to live a life that we used to live, um, live some kind of normalcy or what our idea of normalcy is. And our mind gets very cluttered because our body isn't sometimes able to just go through what's happening now. It thinks about what happened yesterday and why isn't what happened yesterday happening today. And so we build these tensions and these stresses and every day is a new experience. Every day is something different and we need to let go of where we were, what we were doing, how young I used to be, what I used to be able to do, and embrace where I am today. Um, sometimes it's not as significant as getting older. It's just maybe you had a really hard workout yesterday and your body is fatigued. Maybe you didn't get a good night's sleep. But we need to treat every moment with our full attention. What does my body want from this moment? Not what my mind wants from this moment. And if we start going in to what feels good, what is right for me at this moment, rather than the mental of where I was yesterday, I'm actually in my present moment a little bit more and I can enjoy my present moment a lot more. And I want you to just think, of letting go of expectations and just start to feel where you are today. And maybe start noticing your breath, drawing your awareness to your inhale, the quality, the depth, and Notice your exhale. And without forcing, without trying to do anything, you just see what's there. What feels good in your body? What feels right at this moment? Maybe it's shorter breaths. Maybe it's long breaths. Maybe you're adding a little pause in between the inhale and the exhale. But notice how your breath has an original feel for you at this moment.
and then let go of trying to do anything in this class today. Just see if you can feel what feels right, where you should go, how much you should put some effort into a pose, and where you're mentally efforting rather than physically going into each next step. So setting an intent for your practice today and just seeing what might be there. How today's class might feel a little different than yesterday or the day before. Okay. And when you're ready, just open your hands, bring your palms so your palms are facing up. I'm going to bring the chin in towards the chest, and I want you to think about pulling the shoulder blades down. Now, reaching your ear over towards the right side, extend your left fingertips over. Turn your palm so it's facing down, spread your fingers. Make sure your ear is actually over the shoulder and not forward. So if you can, try to get your ear so it's right over the shoulder. Reach your left fingertips out. Now turn the palm up. Thumb is all the way back towards the long edge of your mat behind you. And reach your arm out. And just do this a few times. Rotating at the elbow. Now bring the left arm, face the palm behind you. And so you can see the fingers. And just allow this arm to relax. Allow the shoulder to relax. Maybe even take the right hand and just guide the left shoulder down a little bit more. Maybe even take your hand, run it up and down the side of your neck and just see how that feels. Now I'm not massaging into this. I'm just creating movement in the body. Now guide your chin towards your collarbone on the right side and allow your head to kind of fold in that direction. Bring your chin back in towards the center. Release the left arm, take it out, and face it up and down. Chin is pulling in, crown of the head is pulling forward. Reach your left arm forward. Use your right hand, grab onto your forearm, give a little pull, and then pull your left shoulder back. Gaze down towards your heels. And inhale, coming back to the center. And I just want you to move out the left shoulder and roll it up both directions. Reach and extend the left arm up. Reach the arm up as much as you can, and this time try to press the right hand down. See if you can take your hand and place your palm so your palm is facing up, and press down. So you're actually lifting up a little bit. Now if that hand isn't coming down, don't worry about it. If you can, try to get the arm to float a little. So lifting one arm up, one arm down. Stay here three. And to keep breathing, one, and bring the hands back into the center. Roll your head out a little bit, maybe forward and back, other direction. And then this time, bring your left ear over towards the left shoulder. And again, try to just make sure your head is facing forward, your ear is right over your shoulder. Then I'm going to reach my right arm out. Palms are going to face down. Spread your fingers, spread your thumb. And just start to see how this feels. Kind of a gentle movement through the neck. Now, if you can, rotate so the palm and the forearm face up and the thumb is pulling back as far as you can. Reaching that down and around. So reaching down, pressing that thumb back. So you're going to feel a lot in this back left shoulder blade. And just do that a few more times. This one feels really good on this side. And then turn your palm all the way around behind you, thumb faces down, and then bring your hand behind your back. Try to make sure your fingers are facing down towards your bottom a little bit more, and then use your right hand and just kind of guide the shoulder down. And the ear is coming over towards the side, and again, it's just those little gentle neck massages. Now 
Then use your right hand, guide your chin over to the left side, and just bring your chin down towards the left side, gaze towards the left knee. And then when you're ready, bring your head back towards the center, and I'm gonna pull my arm forward. So I'm gonna bring that right arm out, pull it forward a little bit, Let's bring it out over towards the side for a moment. And then reach it forward. This time, pull your right shoulder back as you pull your fingers forward. And I'm gonna inhale, come back up. Arm is reaching up towards the ceiling. I'm gonna bring my wrist, so my wrist is facing up, and this time, left arm is gonna push it down. So I'm pushing in opposition, lifting one arm up, one arm down, staying here for three. And two, if you can, maybe gaze up, but not throw the head back. One, nice. Bring the arm down, and then roll your shoulder around a little bit. And then go in the other direction. And again, it's just that right shoulder. Bring both arms forward. Interlock your fingers and press your arms forward as you're trying to separate your hands. Pull your head through like you're taking your head through like it's a basket. Throw your belly button in and move your shoulders a little side to side. Throw your belly in. On your inhale, lift and extend the arms up. Bend your elbows. Bring your palms so your palms are facing up. Lift up as high as you can as you press the shoulder blades down. I'm going to reach the arms over towards the right side. Lift up high on the left side. Push your left hip down. Stay here for a few breaths. And try to get your arms towards the backs of the ears as much as you can. Keep extending. On your inhale, look back to the center. And then exhale over towards the left side. Press the right hip down. Reach the arms back. And the arms and the ears are going to align. Lift the heart. Lift the chest. Inhale, coming back to the center. Bring the hands down. Now, keep your hands together. Try to keep your wrists. And you're just going to kind of roll out your hands, roll out your wrists. Do this a few times. Go the other direction. So I'm going to bring my fingers towards my shoulders. Press my shoulders down. Move your head a little side to side. Bring your chin forward. And then roll your head around. And then guiding the shoulders down. Now I'm going to go the other direction. And then inhale the gaze. Keep the shoulders pressing down. Exhale, chin towards the chest, draw the navel in. Inhale, gazing up. Exhale, pressing the chin down two more times. Inhale, gazing up. Exhale, pressing down one more. Inhale, exhale, reach the elbows out to the side, and just as though you have pencils on your elbows and you're drawing circles, move your elbows a little bit, and start to feel what's going on in the shoulders without defining it, without criticizing it, without saying, oh my god, I'm so tight, or listen to that noise. So doing just movements, getting things moving. And you'll notice there's a lot of movement in this house. So the dogs are moving around, the life is waking up and just waking up the body. Maybe bring the elbows a little closer and see if I can get bigger movements. Now as you do this, start to slow it down and round your back and then lift up, round. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, two more. Inhale, lift, exhale, last one. Inhale, exhale, we're gonna stay here. I want you to take and extend the arms out. So bend your elbows a little bit, pull your chin down, chin towards the chest. Inhale, keep the elbows bending down, reaching down, stretching the backs of the shoulders. Exhale, round. Like you're serving a platter to somebody, reach your arms out and pull your head through. 
Inhale, reach the elbows down, lift the heart, lift the chest. I'm not throwing the head back. I'm lifting the chest, gazing up, round. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, round. Inhale, lifting. Last one. Exhale, round, pushing out. Reaching those arms out, squeezing the forearms towards each other. And take your hands, grab onto your shoulders, push your shoulders down. Inhale, the body. Keep the hands on the shoulders. If you can, reach and extend the elbows up like you're taking your shirt off. And then cross the other arm. Push the shoulders down. Inhale. Keep it so maybe the arms are disconnecting over the head. Bring the arms forward. Cross again. Pull the elbows down. Inhale. So if you have right arm on the left, every time we do this, switch. So press the shoulders down, head down. And then reach the arms over the head as you extend two more times. So hands press down, shoulders press down, round the back. Inhale. And again, if it's not in sync with my movement, don't worry about it. How does it feel? Inhale. Reach the arms down. Take your hands down. Move your head side to side. Straighten out your legs. Nice. Oh, that feels good. So open the knees. Take your hands around your knees. Again, getting into the synovial joints. Getting movement flowing in these areas, super important. Grab onto your feet. We're going to come into our Baddha Konasana. If you're not built up, um, you don't have to. If you feel that you can come all the way down without the blanket, you can. If you need to build up or you feel like you have to hold on to your shins, I want you to use the blanket or the pillow. Now, I'm going to walk my hips towards my heels and stop when you can't go any further and then I'm going to walk back. We're going to do this a few times, kind of rolling on the tailbone. So walking forward, sitting up as tall as you can, maybe even grabbing onto the toes, keeping the toes together, walking back and then walking forward. Don't worry about where the knees go, we're just getting things moving and then walking the hips back. Last one like this, walking forward. And then walking back. Now I'm going to stay back on this one. Bring the toes together. Lift the heart. Lift the chest. And then pull yourself forward. Now elbows are going to draw in towards the chest as you do this. And I want you to think about bowing down a little bit. My back is straight. So I'm actually trying to kind of slingshot my heart forward. And as I'm here, push your feet together with firmness. Not just with the grip of the hands, but push the feet together, push the heels together, to push the outer pinky arch down, lift the heart. Now see, can I keep lifting the heart, pressing the knees down, pressing the feet together, drawing the lower navel in, and getting a little lower in my position. Now I want you to do micro little bounces where you are. So we're going to find 10. arches, pull the arches towards the palm and keep pressing the palms 
and the fingers into the toes. Round your back, pull your elbows down. Maybe the toes are coming down in line with the forehead. Or the forehead's coming in line with the toes. Keep extending yourself back. Pull your tailbone back. Almost like you're pushing your back up against the wall. Throw your belly button in so you can sink down a little bit more. Now, if this is too easy, walk the hips forward a little bit and do it again. Round here. We're going to stay here for two more breaths. Inhale, extending up. Use your hands, help your legs back in. I know that's a lot. So I'm going to take my knees over to one side. Feet come over. Let's find our tabletop. Wrists and shoulders align, knees and hips align. Spread the fingers. Round your back, lifting the spine up. Now, as you're here, I want you to walk a little forward and back. Notice how this feels in the back. Where in the back do you feel this? Allow the crown of the head to come down and let the head kind of be loose. Now, roll the shoulders. So, I can kind of roll into the shoulders by dipping the belly button down. But the head is going to stay in the same place. Now, if you can, roll the shoulders the other way. And so, I'm not totally coming into a cow pose, but the back is dropping down a little bit as I roll the shoulders. Lean your whole body over towards the right side, kind of like you're pushing your hip, your shoulder into a wall. Lean in that direction. Think about bringing the left arm under and see, can I press into the left arm and get a little bit more of a lean over towards that right side? Press through the right arm. Turn the eye of the elbow over to the left side, so not creating pressure on the forearm. When you're ready, come back to the center and just neutralize here by pulling the heart forward. Pull the heart forward, shoulders are back. We're gonna come through. So when we come down, we're gonna come through, kind of reset here for a moment. I want you to make sure your knees are hip distance apart and I'm gonna walk the forearms down. I'm gonna bring the elbows out. See if you can start sinking the chest down. So this is knees, chin, chest. If you can, press the chin down, press the chest down. If it doesn't come down, stay in the forearms and just keep pulling the chest down and the chin down. So it might look like this. Elbows are gonna be wider than shoulders, so I'm not compressing the shoulders. If you're able, just keep extending those elbows out. Reach the heart down, maybe gaze forward. If that's not happening, forehead down to the mat. When you're ready, reach and extend the arms forward. And then bring your arms out to your side. Bring your elbows up. Walk your chest forward. Walk your chest forward. Walk your chest forward. Bring the elbows in. Roll the shoulders back. Firm up the legs. So straighten out the legs and squeeze the backs of the thighs down. Now I'm just going to come up an inch. Inhale, I'm not pushing. So I'm not pushing. I'm going to pull my elbows down. Lift the heart. This is a baby cobra. When you're ready, lower down. Bring the feet a little closer together if you can. And turn your inner thighs slightly up. Firm up your legs, firm up your glutes. This time, use your full strength. Inhale. Pull your elbows down as you lift your heart, lift your chest. Keep extending the ears up towards the sky. And the top of the roof of your mouth. When you're ready, lower down. Curl your toes, lift your knees for a moment. And see so if you can pull your right heel back, pull your left heel back. Right, left. If that hurts your knees, make sure to micro bend the knees. When you're ready, bending your knees, push yourself back up into tabletop. Wrists and shoulders align, knees and hips align. So I'm going to lift up, turn so the triceps wrap out, the eyes and the elbows face each other, and I'm going to lean over towards that left side. Now, as I'm leaning to the left side, put all your energy into the left, but make sure your left thumb is down. And then the right hand is just going to come over, and I'm going to push into the right hand. Give myself a little bit of a twist. Maybe even start to gaze to the left. And squeeze. So the eye of the elbow on the left is facing 
over towards the right. When you're ready, coming back to the center, face the eyes of the elbows in. You're going to notice if your arms are facing out like this, it causes a lot of tension in the bicep. And sometimes we get bicep tendonitis because I'm putting a lot of strain on the bicep. That puts strain on the elbow. So turn the elbows out so the whole action of the arms and the chest can start to recruit some of that strength. Spread your fingers, curl your toes, and this time let your knees just start to slowly glide off and see if you can find your downward facing. If downward facing dog is not in your practice, that's okay, we're gonna come up to a standing forward bend here soon. But take a moment and see if you can pedal out the feet. Now rising up onto the toes as high as you can, bend your knees, ribs towards thighs. If you have your ribs touching your side, thighs, see if you can start to draw the heels down. As the heels are down, straighten out the legs a little bit. You're gonna get a nice calf stretch. Draw your belly button up, as though somebody's pulling your hips back. See and notice if your arms can get a little lighter by pressing your arms back, ears and arms stay in alignment. Rise up into the toes, gaze between your thumbs. Start to walk forward. See so if you can go from heel to toe, heel to toe, heel to toe. As far as you can, if you can't get any further, walk your hands back towards your feet. Feet are two fists apart. So make sure your feet are two fists apart and then just let your head hang down heavy. Move your body a little side to side. And I want you to open and close your mouth a few times or maybe even roll out your jaw. And let your teeth get really heavy as so though the top of your mouth feels like it's kind of drawing into your temples. When you're ready, take your hands to your shins, pull your belly button in, maybe bend your knees a little bit, micro bend them for sure, and then exhale, lower down. Let's inhale, push through the feet, exhale, lower. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale. And take your hands towards the tops of the knees, bend your knees, and start to slowly roll it up. And notice that everything is stacking. The ribs come over the hips. The chest comes over the ribs. Reach and extend the arms up. Take your hands together. If you can, draw your shoulders back. Stand tall, tighten the glutes. As you're here, maybe offer just a tiny bit of back bend to keep the glutes super tight as you do this. And take your hands to your heart. Thumbs pressed to your chest. Let's inhale through your nose. Exhale, sigh it out. All right. So stick to the top of your mat. You're going to use your blocks. So make sure you have your blocks. And blocks want to frame the feet. So as I'm here, I can bring my toes together, or you can stand hip distance apart. It does not matter. We're going to move into the hip joint. We're going to get the knees moving a little bit. So we're going to use those blocks to give us a little bit more mobility. If you don't need the blocks, don't worry about it. So come to stand. I want you to think about tightening the glutes as you do this. Let's inhale, reach and extend the arms up. Drop the shoulders, knees to the outside of the thumbs, draw the belly in. Exhale, take the hands to the heart, thumbs press to the chest. Cross the thumbs, bend your knees. See if you can scoop down, ribs towards thighs. Slow, inhale, press through the heels, lift the arms up, keep Utkatasana. Exhale, hands come to the heart, dive forward, tailbone left, hip comes down. Inhale, gaze forward, halfway lift, lengthen, micro bend the knees. Exhale, bend the knees, step the right foot back, right knee comes to the mat. So we're going to stay in our low lunge, uncurl your back toes. So stay here for a moment, push your hip forward. And I want you to do this a few times. Now, if you have knee issues, you can always take a blanket underneath that knee. We're gonna be on it for a little bit. So see if you can curl the toes and uncurl the toes. So press the toes down. Notice, as I do this, can I push all five toes down? If you can't, don't worry about it. 
If you're able, move a little side to side. Think about separating the toes. Uncurl the toes, lift the heart a little bit, maybe even take those blocks up a little bit more if you can. Push the hip forward and kind of let the right hip almost feel like it has a chain on it and it's being pulled down, but both shoulders are being kind of just gently guided back behind you. Curl the toes, press the toes down, maybe straighten the leg. Bend the knee, uncurl the toes. We'll do that one more time. So curl the toes, maybe straighten out the leg. Bend the knee, uncurl the toes, press the weight back into the hip. This time, this first few, I'm going to keep the big toe down. And as you're here, kind of guide your arch. So your arch is facing straight instead of rolling towards its side. So I want to feel some energy into the pad of the foot, the ball of the foot right above the big toe. So feel the ball of the foot press down. So we're gaining some movement in that hip, the knee, and I'm also helping to align all those points of contact. Reach your heart forward, reach your chest forward. Stay here for just a little bit longer and then we're gonna move into this. So you can extend your toes forward. If you can't, maybe work on separating the toes a little bit. See what is going on with the toes. And give them a little bit of love and a little bit of sometimes direction. When you're ready, bend your knee, reach your heart forward. And then just move back and forth. On these first ones, I'm going to keep the toe down so I can engage the hamstring a little bit more. Ribs towards thighs if you can, and just moving into the hip. Now curl the back right toes, straighten out the left leg, toes come up. So I'm pressing forward, and I'm going to kind of keep this foot up so it comes right back into that lunge. So a little forward and back. And I'm just bringing this down so you can kind of see from the side what's going on. Now, I want you to take your blocks forward. Move your right knee out a little bit. So the right knee is going to come towards the right edge of your mat. Take your blocks to the inside and then move your left foot as far to the left edge as you can. Toes are still facing forward on this. So I'm opening the knee. Now as I do this, I want you to think about just moving the left knee. Keep your toes facing forward if you can. Pinky toe and big toe is down. And just move your left knee a little back and forth. And you might feel that hip pop a little bit. And then maybe move the hips in little circles. And going both directions, knowing that sometimes one direction is a little bit more uncomfortable than another. And you're going to hear cracks and creaks and pops and all sorts of good stuff. Extend yourself forward. Bring your right knee back in. Keep your left foot where it is. You can use the blocks if you need them. I'm going to move my blocks out a little bit. And I'm going to take my right hand off of my mat. Now I'm going to turn my left toe so it's facing on or even off the left side of your mat. Left hand comes all the way to the edge. Uncurl your back right toes and just move from side to side. Bend your elbows as you do this, so not locking out the elbows. That puts a lot of strain on the back. So moving a little side to side. Now as you're here, bring your hands to the inside and see, can I roll to the outer arch of the left foot? And then bring the big toe down Roll to the outer arch, bring the big toe down. Again, if you need blocks, if your arms are getting tired, one thing that you can do while you're doing this is you can stack the blocks and bring it to your forearms. And you can roll in and out of that big toe and arch. So arch, big toe. So allow that knee to move and notice which toes are kind of making contact when you do this and which toes are not. When you're ready, walk yourself back in, reset up your blocks. Now I'm gonna walk the left foot over, it might feel a little tight, and I'm gonna place the right toes down. 
See if you can straighten out that right leg and move a little forward and back. If you need that knee down, keep it down. It's okay. I'm going to hop that back leg in a little bit. And now I'm going to bend and straighten. So when I do this, I'm straightening the left leg, bending the right. And then I'm bending the left leg, straightening the right. And you'll find that as you do this a little bit more, it gets a little easier. And just feel how this feels. Look at your left toes. Look at your right toes. Where's your toe guiding? Where's your heel guiding? And when you're ready, step your right foot forward. And I want you to stay here a moment and just kind of feel how does this feel from the left to the right leg. Notice the difference in the body. Maybe open and close that jaw. Notice that the jaw feels different. We keep a lot of tension in our jaw. We kind of clench our jaw a little bit more. Some of us actually have more pain when we sleep and we're clenching our jaw all day. So our jaw doesn't get a lot of decompression. So we need to decompress that. Now as you roll up, come up any way that's comfortable for you. That might be hands, but make it as slow as you can and feel a little of everything. Chin in towards your chest, shoulders are back. Start to tighten the legs as though there's water that's coming through the legs and it's just filling everything up, filling up all the spaces. Reach and extend the arms up. Micro bend the knees, palms come together. Drop your shoulders, squeeze your glutes, push your hips forward, see the arch back just a little and keep the arms reaching up. Inhale, arms and ears align. Exhale, hands come to the heart. Take your right hand to your chest, left hand to the belly, and just take a moment. Let's inhale through the nose. Exhale, sigh it out. And coming into this awareness of how your body feels, kind of what's going on, how one side feels more than the other, this energy in our body and how it's changing from moment to moment. So I'm going to come into that other side. I'm going to take the blocks, so the rocks frame the feet. Toes can touch or not. Let's inhale, reach and extend the arms up. Start to lengthen the legs, reach and see if the fingers can find each other. If they do, squeeze the glutes, drop the shoulders, lift the chest up towards the arms and see if you can offer a little back bend. On your inhale, come up, exhale, hands to the heart, thumbs pressed to the chest. Cross your thumbs, butterfly the fingers, bend your knees, pull your hips down, inhale, stay in your chair pose. And then exhale, hands to the heart, thumbs press to the chest, dive forward, tailbone left hip comes down. Ribs might find the thighs. Inhale, lengthen, draw the belly button towards the spine. Exhale, bend the knees, left foot steps back. Left knee comes down. Now make sure your right knee and ankle align as you're doing this. And I'm gonna start to pull that left hip down. You can uncurl the back left toes. And again, if you need that blanket underneath your knee for support, notice how long we were on the right knee. We're gonna be just that long on the left. So allow the left hip to feel as though it has a chain attached to it. Pull the left hip down as you have that feeling that somebody is just guiding your shoulders back, not yanking them back, but just a gentle fingers towards the sides of the shoulders and they're being kind of guided back. Now let the right knee get heavy and allow the right knee to kind of pull itself forward. And then when you're ready, think about curling your back left toes, lift your heart a little bit, and then uncurl. And then curl the toes, notice do all the toes touch. So is the big toe touching? Is the pinky toe touching? Where do you feel that energy? As you're here, lift the chest up a little bit, let the hip come down. We're gonna do that about four times. So you can uncurl and then curl, and then uncurl, and notice what's going on with the left hip flexor. See if you can relax the left glute as you do this. 
I don't need to put a lot of firmness into that back foot. And just staying here for a breath. Bringing the hands to the blocks and start to notice, lean a little bit of weight forward. Now I'm going to start to shift some of that weight back. And this is when I'm going to press this big toe down. Try to again guide your arch. A lot of times we push too much energy over and I'm leaning weight into the ankle and then we end up with tendonitis on that side. So try to pull the energy in so your kneecap is actually facing right in line with your second toe. Now if the pinky toe doesn't come down, that's okay. Pull your arch in anyway, try to guide your big toe and maybe encourage the toes to be in a certain direction. And you can, you know, gently remind them maybe where they are, maybe take your hands underneath, guide that arch up a little bit more. Our arches start to fall over a period of time and we can get them back. We just need to work diligently to do it. Now keep pulling your heart forward as you do this. And then just a little round, and then pull your bottom back and see if you can sink down a little bit more. Keep encouraging those toes. And then I'm gonna bend into this knee and move a little forward and back. Just start getting that movement. This first couple ones, the toes stay down. So the toes are gonna stay down. Try to keep the big toe down. And if that knee isn't able to straighten, don't worry about it. Just allow it to be where it is. Now when you're ready, start to straighten out that leg and you can take the toes up towards the ceiling. And I'm going to bring that foot down. So this foot stays up. It actually stays flexed. So try to keep it flexed as you're moving in. Notice when you're starting to press the foot back down. So the big toe might not actually even come down as you try to keep that heel engaged. Ribs towards thighs. And just find this movement. When you're ready, press that knee down. I'm gonna walk the left knee over towards the left side, and I'm gonna start to take the blocks to the inside, walk the right knee over. And I just want you to move the right knee out. And so this one is, I'm just letting that knee come out a little to the side, pressing it in and out, getting the hip movement going. So again, getting synovial fluid into those hips. Let's do three, two, one. Nice. Press yourself down. You're going to either take the blocks, you can use the blocks or choose not to use the blocks. So I'm going to roll to the outer arch of the foot and start to turn your toes out a little bit. Make your arms a little wider. Now if you can, roll to the outside of that knee. And I just want you to move a little forward and back. Bend your elbows. Elbows are facing out towards the side. And see if you can find some movement from hip to hip. Now these will be as small or as big as is comfortable for you. Now I'm going to start to move the hips a little bit. So kind of circle the hips. The toes can kind of do whatever they need to. If you need to scooch that knee in, because you feel like your legs are being pulled too far apart, then do that. Remember to circle to the other side. And then pressing yourself forward, I'm gonna roll to the outer arch of that right foot, and then I'm gonna press the big toe down. Roll to the outer arch. Press the big toe down. Roll to the outer arch. Press the big toe down. Roll to the outer arch. Press the big toe down. Roll, big toe. Roll, big toe. Roll, big toe. Nice. Start to walk it back in. Bring that left knee back in line. And I'm going to start to straighten out those legs. Bring your knees a little forward and back. Hi, back. We have a dog that has asthma. So if it sounds like I have, you know, a 90-year-old man waking up first thing in the morning, no, that's my dog. So 
Press this leg back. See if you can get this knee up off the ground. Bring yourself into your lunge. See if you can straighten out that leg. Keep the toes down. Bring the heart up one more time. Straighten out that back leg. Bring your heart up. Nice. Press the hips back for a moment. Just rebound from that. Right knee is going to come forward. Left knee is going to lift. See if you can give yourself that little hop. So now I'm bending one knee, straightening the other. So when I straighten the right leg, the left knee bends. And just start to find these movements. As you do this, see, can I press the left heel down a little bit more? And you don't have to go fast with this. Make it intentional. Start to see, what can I do? Where do I feel this? If you want to go a little faster, you can go a little faster, but make sure your left knee is facing forward, that it's not coming out towards the side. When you're ready, left foot steps next to the right, separate your feet a little bit, and then just hang heavy. Bend your knees as much as you need to. If your hamstrings now, feel loose enough to straighten, straighten. Think about pulling your belly button in, lifting your heart a little bit more, and scooping the belly button in, almost like it's coming underneath the rib cage. Now maybe the hands hang heavy. The arms might even frame the head. If you need to bend the knees for hamstring relief, please do that. Listen to what your body needs. And maybe start to move yourself a little side to side. When you're ready, bend your knees, bend your arms. Let's move the jaw just a little bit more. So, opening the mouth, opening the jaw. When you're ready, super slow, roll it up and find your roll. However it feels good for your body. Notice each vertebra, chin towards the chest. Head is going to come up last. So reach the arms up first, and then the head finds the hands. Take the hands to the heart. Right hand touches the heart, left hand finds the belly. And just breathe. All right, come into a wide stance. So in your wide stance, make sure your feet are hip distance or wider than hip distance apart, and your heels align. A really good way to check if your heels are aligning is come to the back of your mat. As you do this, you're always going to find this line back here will tell me, oh yeah, one leg is not in line with the other. We're going to come into trikonasana. We're going to come into a more narrow trikonasana, so you don't need to move your legs. We're going to reach the right toes forward. I'm going to take my hands to my hips, and I want you to just move your hips back and forth. Now, micro bend your knee, but I don't want you to bend it like that. So, feel this action of the hips. And again, I'm micro bending the knee and turn your knee so your knee is facing towards your second toe. Hold here, left hip is going to press out and see if you can press it out a little bit more and roll your right or left shoulder back. Now, micro bend the left knee. So again, micro bend just means the back of the knee isn't locking out and the kneecap isn't pushing towards the ligaments and the tendons that are holding them towards the back. Roll out your left shoulder, and then roll the other direction. And then reach and extend your left arm towards the left side. Reach your right arm towards the right side. Inhale, exhale, inhale, lift, exhale. So we have these warrior two arms, not going to come out beyond this. And again, this is getting that synovial fluid moving into the tighter spots of my body. So don't worry about getting all the way down, but what am I moving as I'm doing this? On your inhale, come up, reach your arms out, turn your toes forward, look down, make sure your ankles realign, and I'm going to turn the left toes forward. Take the hands down to the hips. 
Now feel the left, or right hip move out and the left hip push in and then move back. And notice if this side feels any different. And sometimes as you do this, there is maybe more pressure to one side of your back. So kind of see where I feel this the most. Now micro bend the left knee, lift the left arch a little bit. That's gonna help micro bend the knee. And look down at your knee. Make sure your knee is actually, knee cap is facing towards the second toe. Think about pushing the hip out a little bit and just start to roll out the right shoulder. And then go in the other direction. Reach the right arm back over towards the right side. Left arm reaches towards the left and come back to standing and then push the hips out. And as you're doing this, almost feel like somebody's pulling your left arm forward. <sighs> pulling forward. Got four more. And three. And two. And one. Reaching yourself back. Let's bring those arms up. Turn the toes in. So I'm going to turn the big toes in a little bit. Lift the arms up. Squeeze your arms towards each other. Open the shoulder blades in the back. Now turn your palms so your palms are facing in towards you and see if you can start bringing the forearms together with the backs of the palms. The pinkies might touch. The thumbs are trying to touch. If you can touch your thumbs, good job. Keep your elbows up. Rotate your palms back, coming into kind of cactus arms. Let's do that again. So squeezing in, exhale, rounding, try to press the forearms and then turn. So the backs of your palms are trying to find each other. Keep the forearms together. Keep pulling the thumbs in. Lifting the heart. Try to keep those pinkies together. See if you can lift the elbows up. Let's do five, four, three, two, one. Nice. Rotate back. Bring the hands down. I'm going to take myself forward. Toes are still facing slightly in. Bend your knees if you need to. But find your forward bend, let your body get really heavy. And just start to move your ribs a little side to side. All right, so as you're facing uh, or folded forward, make sure your belly is pulled in. If you need to, bend your knees, but face your toes so the toes are facing in towards each other. Think about pushing the heels out and the inner thighs are spiraling out. Let the head draw down, let the elbows get heavy, and just kind of move your body a little side to side. Take your hands down to the ground, bring your heels out, and then bring your, I'm sorry, heels in, toes out, and just start to walk it in a little bit. See if you can find your yogi squat. Now, if you don't have a full squat, that's okay. You can stay here, work here. You can use the blocks if you need to, come all the way down or start to find your squatted pose. And understanding that where you are right now is where you're supposed to be. Not necessarily trying to focus on where we're not. And that's always an easier thing for us to figure out or think about is how I'm falling short. And I want you to understand that in everything that you do in your practice, the more you draw awareness to where you are, the further you're going to get. That's all you need to do, is the minute I realize that something is out of alignment or misplaced, I just need to draw my awareness to it. I don't need to fix anything right away. I just need to see how this starts feeling in my body and little by little keep being aware of how day by day I change not coming into an expectation like I have to be in a certain place at any certain destination or time. So when you're ready, bring yourself all the way down. Bottom comes to the ground, legs are gonna come out a little wider. I want you to take your thumbs to your hips and we're gonna keep working into this mobility. If you're able, take your legs out to your width. That might look like this, might be slightly bent knees, might be out here. Wherever you are, I want you to press your hands down Push your hips back, so kind of lean into it. If you need to take a blanket and build the back of the tailbone up, you can do that. Take your thumbs to your hips, take your fingers to the inside, and I want you to walk your hips back. So I call this the John Wayne walk, and you're gonna move your hips back a little bit. And as you do this, 
kind of move the hips around and maybe rolling to the other direction. You can even roll a little forward and back. Now walk your hips back, see if you can pull yourself forward. Walk your hips back, pull yourself forward. Now as you pull yourself forward, keep your toes up and see if you can take your hands to either the thighs or the shins and start to extend the legs out a bit and move your body a little side to side. When you're ready, bring your legs back together, bring your knees together. We're gonna to come onto our back. So take your toes down, bottoms down, and start to round yourself down, super slow. Chin in towards your chest, and think about hollowing out the belly here, and keep extending down. Going as slowly as you can. Now, you're gonna grab onto your block, you're gonna take your block underneath your sacrum. So it's right on that tailbone. And I want you to extend the legs up. Now start to open the arms and let the palms come up and just roll out the ankles. And if you have any reason that you cannot invert, if you have high blood pressure, if you have glaucoma, if you have anything going on that's in the neck or the lower back, feel free to not use the block. Maybe the legs are up or you can even just Stay in a bent knee pose. If you're ever uncertain, make sure to just ask your medical professional and see what would be available for you. So I'm gonna move my ankles a little bit and just kind of roll out the ankles. Now, if you have another inversion that you would like to take, maybe a plow pose or a shoulder stance, if you know how to safely come into that, feel free. I'm gonna stay here with legs up and I'm gonna move the feet. And so I'm gonna keep rolling into the ankles and notice how one leg might have a little bit better direction and the other leg is just kind of doing its best. When you're ready, bring your feet down, squeeze your thighs, knees are facing forward. So I wanna make sure this action's in the hamstrings, not the glutes. So really important not to press the knees out towards the sides or turn the toes out. Knees are directionally facing forward. Press the weight into the heels and the balls of the feet. Press into the big toes and actually try to take the upper ribs down. So that's gonna lift your tailbone up a little bit. Now you're gonna slide that block out and if you can, start to press up a little bit, but keep your neck fairly long. Maybe the shoulder blades come underneath and you might find the hands, but again, try to lengthen the neck, chin away from the chest and I'm squeezing the thighs towards one another, pushing weight into the big toes, drawing the hips up, but not pushing with the glutes, using the hamstrings. So take a moment, close your eyes, and feel the action of where it's originating. Feel if your glutes are overactive, or you really are starting to feel this energy rise up through the hamstrings. Now the hamstrings connect to the sits bones. Okay, but the glutes connect to the tailbone and that's gonna be where I'm getting that compression in the lower back. So I don't want the compression in the lower back. I wanna feel this kind of rise up from the base of the sits bones and that's gonna lift the action a little bit more. Press the shins directionally forward, keep the thighs squeezing forward. Stay here for another breath. Now, as you're coming down, release the palms up and from the upper to the lower, go down as slowly as you can. Nice, grab onto your left knee, pull your left knee in, and keep the right leg so the right knee is facing up. I'm gonna take the left foot right in front. So the left heel is gonna to connect to the side of the left thigh, and then just allow your knees to fold over towards the right side. Stop when it's uncomfortable and allow for this gentle twist. Now, if you want a little bit more, you're gonna lift the rib cage up a little bit and start to extend your left arm out. Maybe the right arm comes out. And without pushing, without trying, can you settle into the pose? Can you feel your body get a little heavier?
When you're ready, start to allow the knees to come back up. Uncross the legs, push the lower back down. This time, grabbing onto the right knee and just pull the right knee into your ribs. And then take the right heel to the outside of the left thigh. And I'm gonna exhale both legs just gently over towards the left side. See where you feel this. And this might be enough if you want a little bit more. You're gonna kind of lift up for the rib cage. Maybe the right arm comes out. Now remember, every side is a little different. So if when you're in these twisted poses, if you feel as though your breath is, if you're holding your breath, that means your, your body is pushing a little bit more. You want to be able to relax and you want your body to feel this heaviness, this weight. When you're ready, allow your knees to gently come up on your inhale and then uncross the legs. Allow the spine to decompress here for a moment. So just press the spine down. Taking one knee in, maybe the other, and roll a little forward and back, maybe up and down on your spine. And then coming into your Shavasana. And whatever your Shavasana, whatever this expression is in your body, make just tiny little movements in your Shavasana. And then be okay with where you are without trying to refine every pose. And notice my tendencies. Because again, yoga is about starting to recognize or noticing the, the habits, the little things I do. And if I feel that I always need to readjust to make something better. My daughter is an artist. And when she's in a flow, her pencil just seems to kind of move on its own. But when she's not in a flow, she will erase and re, erase and redraw, erase and redraw. And all those little micro adjustments make for a lot of pencil marks. And sometimes we have to be okay with where our original is today. Where is the direction of where my pencil wants to go today? And start to recognize what that is without feeling the need to constantly redefine or change or recalibrate each little movement and just start to feel how does this position feel? And notice how your body feels from maybe where it started. Notice if there's an area that you feel a little bit more open. And allowing yourself to stay here for a few more breaths. And when you're ready, maybe any movements that your body feels drawn to make. That might be wiggling the fingers and toes, that might be wiggling the nose, the mouth. Um, drawing your heels in a little closer towards you. Make sure you press to the lower back. If you want to grab your knees or roll a little side to side or just give yourself a simple hug, Feel free to do that. We're going to come up to seated pose. So if you want to lie down on your right side for a moment or the left. 
And then pressing yourself up into a seated pose, we're gonna finish off with um, a thought for today. And today your thought is, you're enough. You are enough exactly where you are. You don't need to do or change or be anything else for somebody else. You know, we all want to be these copies of everybody else we see. We look at somebody else's life and we're like, oh, I want that, or I want to look like that, or I want to be like that. But the original of any work of art is the one that has value, not the copy. And so we look at everybody else's life and we feel like we're not enough. And you are enough. You're an original. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. And you're not supposed to be like anybody else. And so when we look at social media and we look at everybody else's life and we think I'm not enough who I am or where I am because I'm not like that, you are. You're totally enough where you are. And so we're going to finish off with a few deep breaths and as you breathe in, I just want you to breathe in this idea that I'm a masterpiece. I am enough. I am a valuable original and a valuable contribution to this world. And I don't have anything to prove to anybody. So we're going to breathe in for two, three, four, and five. Maybe hold here for a moment and then exhale for two, three, four, and five. Let's inhale. Little pause. And exhale. Last one, inhale. A little pause. And exhale. And exhale. All right. If you are enjoying these videos, please be sure to like and subscribe to this page. Um, share, comment, all of these things really help. If you would like to donate or be a sponsor um, for these videos, please feel free to do that as well. Thank you so much. I love each and every one of you. I know you're going to have a blessed day.